After messing around with the PitKit 5 and the ATtiny13, it hit me just how old of a chip the ATtiny13 is. At the same time, it can be so convenient to have a small pin count microcontroller on hand. But I would not want to use any chip that old in any kind of new project. So I decided to take a look at the ATtiny chips and see what's new. And it looks like Microchip has three fairly new series of low pin count ATtiny microcontrollers. The Tiny AVR0, Tiny AVR1, and Tiny AVR2 series. And they certainly have a lot more to them than the ATtiny13. So I decided to order a few of the 8 pin ones and see what's what with them. At first I was just going to make or order a breakout board for the 8 pin SOIC package. But that's not really that practical these days. So I decided to make a small PC board with a few different sections on it. Of course the 8 pin microcontroller. A voltage regulator, one that can accommodate an adjustable version. These microcontrollers can operate from 1.8 to 5.5 volts. An op amp section. This section I'm a bit iffy on, but I'll consider this a first try at it. Some pull up resistors and a couple of switches. Some LEDs connectable to any of the six I.O. lines. A couple of small MOSFET switches. A spot for an external oscillator, just in case need to test for that. The programming interface connections. And a connection to use with the breadboard. So I'm going to call this version 1 of my 8 pin Tiny AVR test board. Probably should be version 0.1. The Tiny AVR chips use the UPDI programming interface, which requires three wires, UPDI data, VCC, and ground. I decided to use a 2mm pitch version of the legacy UPDI header. I had some on hand, so I thought, why not use them? So I have a 6-pin, dual-row, 2mm pitch socket with a keying pin, so it can only be plugged up one way. This is the connection to the PitKit 5. The PC board gets a 6 pin header in which one of the pins has been cut off. But I'm thinking I will change this for the next version board. I don't like it as much as I thought I would. For the connection to the PitKit 5, I have a 0.1 inch pitch 8 pin header and I'm going to be using an 8 pin housing as a strain relief for the wires. The wires will connect to pins 2, 3, and 4 of the 8 pin header that plugs into the PitKit 5. Pin 2 being the VCC, pin 3 ground, and pin 4 the data line. Once the wires are soldered to the header, I'll push the plastic housing up over the connections. I'll pull the housing back a bit and put some hot melt glue over all the pins. That will hold everything in place. So what I have here is an ATtiny402. It looks like it has the largest program size for the 8-pin Tiny AVR0 series, 4 kilobytes of program flash, 256 bytes of SRAM, and 128 bytes of EEPROM. So I'll install R42 to connect the LED D2 to the microcontroller's PA1, and I'll install R13 to connect switch 1 to PA2. That should allow me to test both input and output. I have a 5 volt regulator installed on the board, so I can run the microcontroller at full speed. Well, if everything's connected correctly. So let me check that right now. I'll start a new standalone MPLAB X project. Of course, it's an 8 bit AVR microcontroller. And it's the ATtiny402 chip. And the tool is the PitKit 5. I'll select the latest compiler I have installed. and then give the project a name. Now to see if I have it connected correctly, I'll do a read of the device. Connecting to the PitKit 5, halfway there. And there it is, ATtiny402 found. Such a good feeling when the connection is correct on a new board. 
Revision C microcontroller. I haven't looked at the errata sheet, and I'll have to do that. Amazing what kind of strange things can run across in them. So it looks like my interface to the microcontroller is working good, and that's nice. Now I want to try the code configurator and see what is available with it. Well, both the MCC Melody and the Classic are available for this chip. More libraries available with the Classic. Maybe it's just me, but I've not had the best of luck with the Melody, so I think I'll just go with the Classic. I'll start with the I.O. pins. PA1 is connected to the LED, so that will be an output. And PA2 is connected to switch 1, so that will be an input. I'll give them names I can remember. And set both to start in the high state. Now to the system module. I see it defaults to a 10 MHz main clock. I'll slow that down. Save on some electricity. 8x prescale will be fine. Want to make sure the watchdog timer is off. Yeah, that all looks good, best I can tell. Now I need a timer. I'll add the TCA0 timer. Haven't really looked to see what the difference is between the TCA and TCB timers. Probably either would work as I just want a one millisecond timer. This is one of my favorite things about the code configurator. I can just enter the time I want and it will figure out the value for the registers. Let me see what register is set for the time period. Okay, the PER register. Makes sense. And it's set to 9C3 hexadecimal. So that's 2499 for a 2.5 MHz clock. Seems like that should be about right. I'll hit the generate button and let's see what it spits out. Close down the MCC. First thing, let me see if what it generated will compile. Very good, compiled with no errors. The main file and function it created, sure not much in it. I'll open up the TCA0.h file, see what functions there are for accessing the timer. No start or stop functions, but I had the enable button checked in the MCC. Okay, looks like I'll need the is overflow interrupt enabled and the clear overflow interrupt flag. Not using any interrupts here, just going to pull the overflow flag. At least that's the plan. So I'll add the timer code to the main run loop. I will double check and make sure the timer initialization code does turn on the timer. Yes, that should start the timer, so should be good to go. I'll add a function that is called every one millisecond. I'll call it msTick. Add the function prototype to the top of the file. Now at first I just want to see if the timer is working, so I'll just add a bit of code to flash the LED. Let me find the code for the I.O. ports. Well, it's not in port.h. Ah, pinmanager.h. And there it is. Well, I should be able to remember those. The four I would use on a regular basis anyway. So I'll just toggle the LED every 400 milliseconds.
Very nice. Looks like at least timer A and the output PA1 are working like I would expect. Let me speed it up a bit, just to make sure. Yeah, that's working fine. Okay, now I want to test my switch input. I'll just use the switch low state as a trigger to flash the LED a few times. Put the flash times in milliseconds in an array. And then program the chip. Now to see if it works. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. So have the timer working, port output, and port input working. Just the very basics. But have to start somewhere. Hopefully more to come on this. Thank you for watching.